Anderson TV today is at the Madison County Historical Center and we are with some distinguished guests and I'm going to let them introduce themselves and then we're going to talk about this wonderful facility and this extraordinary and prestigious award that they just won. Steve, why don't you start? Okay, uh, I'm Steve Jackson and I'm the uh, Madison County Historian. Very good. I'm Lou Lawler, and I am president of the Madison County Historical Society and in charge of the genealogy department. Very good. Okay, so tell me just some facts about the historical center that folks may not know. Um, we've talked before, and we've said the Madison County Historical Society is kind of Madison County's best-kept secret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell us a little bit. Uh, to unveil the secret, if you if you would. We have around 40 volunteers. We do not have any paid staff. The volunteers more or less work in the areas that they are interested in, unless we have specific events and then everybody pitches in. You want to add something? I do. I think it's important to, to understand that uh, we have that number of volunteers. Um, they come in uh, at their own uh, time schedule, but at any time when we're open, Darla, uh, eight to 10 to 12 volunteers are here working. Maybe not always the same ones, but they're here working, uh, contributing to the historical society in the way that uh, they enjoy doing. And so I think that's a remarkable statement, the fact that there are that many of them working in the building at, at one time. As I get around the state and talk to other historical societies, they may not even have that many members, yet right. we have that many volunteers who are here all the time. So that, that's a real statement to um, the appeal that this center has, not only for people who want to come in and volunteer, but for visitors. Tell me what some of their tasks are. In the genealogy department, um, we have one lady that does nothing but church research, and so we have about 30 volumes about churches from all over Madison County. Um, and we have discovered that there's around 70 churches that are over 100 years old that are still being used. Um, we also have one lady that works on veterans and we have volumes for Korean War, Vietnam War, World War II, and we're adding other wars as we get the information. Um, we also have one lady that does uh, research for us. Uh, she may go to the library. Uh, we get queries from all over the United States and we have gotten queries from European countries in Australia and so we have a researcher who goes to the public library and finds information, but she also hits the health department and the courthouse if necessary. Um, and that's in the genealogy department. Um, here in the, uh, this is the um, Jack and Helen Nicholson Historical Library that we are sitting in. Uh, anybody in the county can come in and use the facilities. Um, we have information on businesses and people and uh, houses and, and whatever. Uh, we just keep adding information. Um, once in a while, we do have some school students who come in and do for a research project. Sure. So that's what we are here for, to help. Um, now, just to interrupt real quick, is there a charge for those services? No, it's free. Right, and I think uh, there's the no charge to get in. That. There's right. no charge to get in. Uh, we operate on donations mm -hmm. and memberships to the Historical Society. Um, as we go through the building, um, on the Meridian Street side are our exhibit rooms. And right now we have a quilt exhibit along with pin cushions, sewing machines, um, vests, and jackets. And that's going to be open until January the 9th. And how early do some of those quilts date back? Oh, they go back in the 1800s. Right. Some of them are over 150 years old, maybe. In the basement, we have our trains. Right. And um, we have what we call our train man is Roger Hensley. Mm -hmm. And he has two or three volunteers who works with him. And they're constantly changing 
the layouts or adding to the layouts and they do have a layout of every size train that's been made. On our second floor we have what we call the school room and we have memorabilia from all county schools. Uh, the majority is it from Madison Heights and Anderson and Highland but we do have from all county schools. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, have a couple of rooms set up in the old-fashioned early 50s and maybe uh, 40s with the type of um, kitchen items and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, we do have um, what we call the Delco room right. and the guide lamp room. And we have um, the artifacts that we have accumulated from those two factories in those particular rooms. Now they're kept locked all the time and we have to have uh, somebody to unlock those to let you in if you're definitely interested in that. And we also, ex we still accept artifacts from people who have those items. Um, we also have what we call the architecture room and we have blueprints from buildings from all over Anderson and Madison County area that um, Cato, the architect, gave right. us. and. Um, I think that pretty well covers everything that we've got, just generally. Sure. Well, and we have one. We have one more important uh, thing, and that is um, uh, back in um, January of 2009, Darla, um, we acquired the orphan records mm. from the two orphanages that used to be in Madison County. Um, we had volunteers index those orphan records for us. There's uh, over 2,500 wow. uh, children's names uh, and the records for those children. Um, and we index them and we have them for people to, be, to come in and access. And uh, we're proud to say that just recently, uh, because of those records, we, we reunited, reconnected, our 100th family. Wow, that's incredible. 100 families have come in and, and been able to find their other family members through the use of these records. And so that's really a great service that the Historical Society provides. Um, one of the things that you do produce is a newsletter. And, and that's done by volunteers as well, correct? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. okay, yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, our Gazette, we uh, produce it every uh, three months, and anybody um, can write an article or put information in the Gazette. We have a, a set form that we use, mm -hmm. um, and we, we have one person that's usually in charge of that. And, um, in fact, we're having uh, this next week, uh, we'll be putting the Gazette ready to mail it for January, February, and March. And in that, we give the information, you know, meetings and um, anything that we thought had come up that was important for the membership to know and to remind people, too, that, you know, their memberships are due. Um, and it's just a general knowledge about what's going on for the next three months. Okay. And then, so in that, if you have a new exhibit coming, then people would be made aware yes. in that. Yes. Tell me how often you have new exhibits and what have some of those historically been? Um, we generally have new exhibits about every two or three months. Um, at first, we were doing uh, exhibits like every five weeks or so, and that really got hard to do. So we combined it to a, sh a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. um, like right now, our quilt exhibit is going on. Um, we had... Um, Aladdin lamps. We've had um, family members. One of our first families, we had the Bronnenberg family mm -hmm. um, and all the things that they were known for in the county. Um, we have had Delco. We have had a Guide Lamp. Um, Linda Jones, our session uh, manager, um, she did a linens and lace that was right. very popular. And I think she's going to do a similar one this next year. When they put the, when they take the quilt one down on the last day, January the 9th, then I believe they're going to set up something to do with Civil War. And um, they're looking at um, individuals 
from the area that were in the war. And uh, I don't know what all they're going to show, but they put things together and they bring things out you didn't even know they had. Right. One other exhibit that we had, Darla, that was extremely popular was at one time, uh, right after the gas was discovered uh, mm -hmm. uh, here in 1887, mm -hmm. uh, that brought the glass industry to mm -hmm. Madison County. Reason being is to, to create glass, you need a flame that burns hotter than a normal flame, and gas from the ground enabled those that fire to be created, and thus the, uh, the glass industry, and it boomed here in Madison County as long as there was an availability of, of natural gas. And as a result of that, we have a tremendous collection, and it was on exhibit here a while back, just a portion of it, of the various mm -hmm. pieces of glass that were made in this, in this uh, county. And um, I know you've heard of Waterford Glass. Absolutely. Well, we had a company here by the, by the name of the Wright Cut Glass Company that uh, I think the pieces of glass that they produced are equal to, mm -hmm. if not better, than Waterford glass. And we had those on display. And I know that uh, because it was only a portion of that uh, collection that they're planning on doing that again mm -hmm. in the future. So we've got a tremendous amount of wonderful things here that have been donated to us by the good people of, of Madison County. They bring them in and uh, our, our exhibit people look them over and get an idea for an exhibit, and pretty soon mm -hmm. they put it out there for everyone, and uh, that's how it works. You recently won a very distinguished award from the state of Indiana, is that correct? From the uh, Indiana, Indiana Historic, Historical, Indiana Society. Historical right. Society, yes. So tell us a little bit about that. We're very excited for you. Well, the, the award is called the Outstanding Historical Organization Award. Uh, the Indiana Historical Society, on an annual basis, on their Founders' Day dinner, Darla, right. which is always the first Monday in December, uh, they uh, award uh, historical awards for uh, uh, different individuals and organizations throughout the state, and you apply for that. And we submitted an application back in um, late July uh, detailing all the things that we do here, and we had our fingers crossed. We had our fingers okay. crossed because we're up against, we know, some stiff competition from right. around the state. And uh, they, uh, uh, this year they selected two uh, that they thought were worthy of receiving the award. The um, Porter County Museum in Valparaiso was, was one of the selections, and we were the other selection. And so we were invited to uh, come down to Indianapolis to the Indiana History Center, the Marilyn and Eugene Glick Right. Uh, History Center on Ohio Street in the Canal in downtown Indianapolis. It's, and it, it's a tremendous facility. And they have a theater that mm -hmm. is just, it's huge and beautiful. And yeah, it's a phenomenal facility in their own right down there. So Yes, it is. And it was a great place. We were in the Great Hall for the, uh, the banquet. And I told uh, the folks here, I had uh, been honored in 2012 with an award given to me there. And so I'd been there one time. And so... I was telling our folks here, I said, uh, if you've seen pictures of the state dinner in the White House, this is as close to a state dinner that you're going to get, probably. And uh, and I think that uh, yeah. Lou would agree. Yeah, it, was, it was great. It was absolutely mm -hmm. fabulous. They make you feel so special, and they treat you like, um, make you feel so good. And so we went down there. There was 14 of us that went. Uh, and, right, um, and that was comprised of board members, board and, members, and volunteers. And volunteers. They, they're all right. all people who are associated with the historical society here were uh, were able to go, and uh, it was a great evening of uh, of uh, food and um, and then the presentations. And uh, uh, Lou and our first vice president Harry Kirkenbauer were asked to come up and receive the award. And uh, we were very, very proud of that. Uh, that's mm -hmm. quite an accomplishment. Um, it says a whole lot about the Madison County Historical Society and the work that we do to be recognized at the state level right. for that. And uh, uh, we've had other statewide recognitions in the past, uh, but this one uh, it, it was really special. It was really right. special. This is, this is the big one, it right? Is. Big it one. is, <laughs> right. it is, it is, for sure. Yes. Well, we are very, very proud of you and celebrate with you. And uh, in this whole process, 
uh, I've become more familiar with the History Center and just am thrilled at the resources for Madison County residents. And like we talked about, people sometimes don't know what uh, what is here and, and the exploring that they can do within these walls. So we right. want to be sure that people are aware of, of what you offer the community. And I think we would like to make an important point. Um, as, as Lou said earlier, it, everything we do is at no charge to the public. Exactly right. Uh, but the second thing that's, that's is important is we have an elevator in this building, and so we, right. are, mm -hmm. we are handicapped accessible to all three floors of the building. And so, uh, and we're right off of 11th Street here, so there's no steps uh, that a person has to, to uh, encounter should they uh, uh, be handicapped uh, and not, not handicapped accessible. And so um, we're um, we're proud that we're able to to be able to accommodate everyone in this building. We also have our meeting room is called the Bowman Room. It's named after uh, Richard and Marita uh, Bowman, who he was a former president and volunteer here. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that particular room, uh, we can seat 50 or more people. And that's where we have our monthly programs. And it is also open to anyone in the county who would like to have a meeting there. And it's free of charge. We don't charge them. They can use it for free. Well, Steve, this past October, for the first time, the Historical Society did a cemetery tour. So tell me a little bit about that. And in particular, if there's uh, any information that you want to share with us uh, about that tour, we'd love to hear that as well. Okay. Um, the idea came to us from, uh, had been suggested from um, people who live outside of this county and, and other counties in Indiana said, oh, we've been on a cemetery tour where we live and it really was successful and really interesting. So that planted the seed in our minds to do something and that came to fruition here on Saturday, October the 29th of this uh, 2016. Um, we selected uh, Maplewood Cemetery uh, for the notables that are buried there. And um, I did the biographical research on the individuals that uh, the cemetery tour visited. And then in cooperation with the main stage theater players, mm -hmm. uh, they came and in first person uh, were positioned at the gravesite of those notables and spoke as if they are that person, and uh, relayed the biographical information that I had provided for them. And uh, uh, we moved uh, from the History Center here. We, we, Darla, we, we weren't mm -hmm. sure how successful it would be, and so right. we, we um, reserved a bus, and we hadn't even advertised it, and in five days the bus was full. So got to get another <laughs> bus, which, which we did. And uh, that second bus full was filled, uh, in about seven or eight days with a waiting list, I think, of 13 or 14 mm -hmm. people wow. on top of that. Uh, we left here at 3 o'clock on the afternoon of October 29th, uh, 2016, and we stopped first at the Hillegoss Monument uh, on Grand Avenue, uh, uh, West Maplewood Cemetery, and I told the story of the monument. Then the buses took us into uh, Maplewood Cemetery where the, um, our guests got off the bus and walked through the uh, cemetery on a guided tour of those notables that were buried there. People such as the Remy brothers, sure. uh, Charles Henry, um, um, uh, a survivor of the Titanic is buried there. And, uh, really? Yeah, oh, mm -hmm. we, we, we picked some good ones, I think. Uh, the overriding comment from everyone mm -hmm. that day and for days afterward was, are you gonna do it again? And so we are in the, in the planning and considering different options uh, to do one again in 2017. And it was a fundraiser for us. Uh, the tickets were a nominal price and uh, uh, it did generate some money for us. And uh, so um, we're planning on doing it again and stay tuned for uh, announcements about <laughs> what we plan to do uh, in 2017. That's great. That is really exciting. Is. Um, so just don't leave us hanging. Tell us one of the stories. <laughs> well, the, uh, the, the story that, was, uh, um, that I 
really liked was the uh, uh, Charles Romaine, who was the survivor of the Titanic. Um, if you've seen the movie, um, there's been two movies made about the Titanic, the sinking of the Titanic, and in each movie there is a scene of some men playing cards and uh, a steward, a ship steward, runs into the room and announces, uh, we've, we've, we're sinking, we've struck an iceberg and we're sinking. And these men are so <laughs> engrossed in, in their card game that they don't want to leave the card game. And finally, <laughs> and finally, in movie depiction, finally the ship begins to list a little bit and they say, well, hey, this guy, steward, must know what he's talking about. So, so the, um, uh, Charles, um, uh, Romaine, he goes out on the deck, and um, his story is that uh, he jumped in the uh, the water and was rescued by one of the lifeboats. Um, he, of course, survived. He comes back uh, to the... He had been working out of London and New York. He comes back, and he, he lives in Anderson for a while, and uh, he's still working for the same firm on the East Coast, and lo and behold, he goes to New York City one day, about this time of year, and uh, he's on the east side there somewhere, and he crosses the street, and he gets hit by a cab and killed. And so uh, you're kidding? No, no. no. So that's uh, <laughs> that in a nutshell is is his story. But to think that he survived the Titanic right. and then get hit by a cab is uh, um, um, certainly different. That's terrible. And uh, so that's just that's just one of the stories we have. We have. Uh, uh, a number of uh, professional baseball players. Uh, you know, we all know of Carl Erskine, and we know of Adam Lind, and some know of Jermaine Allensworth from Anderson, but we've had seven others uh, who have been uh, made, fortunate enough to make the major leagues, and one of those, uh, Thomas Fisher, um, was a pitcher for the Boston Bean Eaters, in 1904, and he the was Boston Bean Eaters. Yes, the uh, Boston wow. Bean Eaters. Uh, today they are the Atlanta Braves, uh, but uh, he was a pitcher for them, and he was from here. And uh, Darla, those boys uh, in the old days all honed their skills at a city park that was actually located uh, in uh, Park Place, um, and uh, off just along uh, East 8th Street there, just uh, east of the Eisenhower Bridge, there was a huge baseball park there. Oh, really? And um, so they honed their skills there because these are all players that played in the late 1800s and early 1900s from Madison County. And so anyway, that uh, Thomas Fisher was one of the uh, notables on the trip. I mentioned the Remy brothers, uh, Myron Reynolds, uh, Charles Henry uh, was on the tour. Um, uh, William Stanton, who Stanton Park is named for, uh, and probably my favorite person in that cemetery is a lady by the name of Ella B. Kerr. And Ella B. Kerr is credited with the founding of the tuberculosis hospital here, for, uh, operated 1924 to 1947. Hospital was located where you may, may know the area today as Tanglewood, sure. uh, east of Anderson. Well, she had a TB hospital there, and in that period of time that uh, she operated the hospital, she's credited, Darla, with saving 3,000 lives uh, who had tuberculosis. And uh, at that time, wow. tuberculosis could only be treated by, by two methods. One was complete rest, and the other was fresh air. And so she provided both of those things in her sanitarium uh, there at, uh, at the, uh, uh, on, on White River east of Anderson. But she's buried in Maplewood, and one of the uh, main stage players portrayed her and um, John Terhune, former mayor of Anderson, was part of the tour. So we had a lot of interesting people, and it was so well received uh, by uh, everyone that was on the trip. They're very enthusiastic, so we'll do that again. Yeah, that's great. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. Sign me up now. <laughs> I went on the first bus. <laughs> and we're always, uh, we always invite the, the sitting mayor of Anderson mm -hmm. to come in March and give us kind of a state of the that's city right. address. And... Uh, uh, that began uh, during uh, uh, Mayor Smith's first administration and carried through Mayor Ackman, back again through Mayor Smith, and then last year we were quite pleased to have Mayor Broderick come, and he's invited to come this year. We, we generally do that in March. So that's uh, part of the variety of programming that we offer folks. Uh, right. And um, uh, we also have a Civil War Roundtable here in Anderson, and uh, that meets in the Bowman Room. 
as well on the third Monday night of the month. The historical society's meetings are the fourth Monday night of the month. And the Civil War Roundtable is just merely a discussion group. Uh, we just, we'll have programs. We'll show some DVDs about the Civil War. And it's people of all levels of interest of the Civil War. You can be a novice to a, an expert. And we all just blend together and have a good time discussing something that is we have a common bond, and that is our interest in the Civil War. And that's been going on. We just celebrated in uh, May of uh, this year our 25th birthday. So for over 25 years, the Civil wow. War Roundtable, Madison County Civil War Roundtable, has met here at the History Center. So. And any of our meetings are open to anybody. You do not have to be a member of the Histor Historical Society to come to the meetings or the programs. It's open to anybody. And the Historical Society in Madison County first started in 1884. Is that what I thought? Yes. We just, we just this week, celebrated our 132nd birthday because we were founded on December the 20th, 1884, at 4 p.m., because that's the time stamp that's on the document, <laughs> on the document. that was recorded at the courthouse Very that good. day. So, so at 4 o'clock on December the 20th, 1884, the Historical Society was founded. Um, and uh, we've been going strong ever since. Uh, we've had periods where we've been up and down. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, right now, uh, we're, we're celebrating. We're now in our 133rd year. I think that says a lot about Absolutely. who we are and the fact that we're here to stay. And as I told you when you were in here earlier, uh, this is the best kept secret in Madison County. Right. It really is. We get people who come in here for the first time, and as you did, wow, <laughs> didn't know all of this was here. And uh, that makes us feel good. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad to hear that. And Steve, I love to hear the story um, about uh, how you came to get your position and exactly what a Madison County historian uh, does and how you keep your role and how that works. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Well, briefly, the the county historian program was inaugurated in 1981 as a joint program uh, sponsored by the Indiana Historical Society, which is an independent uh, society, and then the Indiana Historical Bureau, which is a branch of the state of Indiana. And they decided that it would be a good idea if, if in each county in Indiana, there would be one historian who would be a resource for the citizens of that county to be able to go to uh, for whatever historical question, inquiry that they may have. And so uh, I am the fourth in, of uh, the county historians in Madison County. First one was Howard Eldwin, the second one was uh, Dr. Jack Nicholson, the third one was Richard Bowman, and I'm number four. Uh, I received my appointment in July of 2008. Um, I'm given guidelines as to how to function, Darla, but it's, it's a really wide spectrum, and, and I kind of have always adopted the attitude of rather than me thinking of things to do for the county, let the county speak to me. Let the county tell me what its needs are, and then I will adjust to that. And so in this county, it seems like people like to have programs. They like to hear about right. our county's history. And so I've developed a number of programs on all aspects of our history. Uh, the Anderson Herald Bulletin has asked me to write a column for them. Uh, um, so I do that on Sunday mornings. The Madison Magazine that sure. the Herald Bulletin publishes, uh, I'm a contributing writer there uh, for each of the issues that come out. Um, and then I'm just a source of information for whoever comes in the door. And uh, uh, if I don't know, which a lot of times I don't know the answer, I generally know how to find out the answer. For example, last night I get an email, and the email says, how did, how did Davis Park come to be called Davis Park, which is the First United Methodist Church right. Park out at Layton Road in 32? Well, I didn't know the answer, but I knew who to call to get the answer, I got it and relate it back to the in individual. So that's part of my, part of the many things that I do. There's there's not a day goes by I'm busy 365 days a year doing something historical. I'm sure. Well, and you are a county treasure, and yes. we are <laughs> we're thrilled to have you in Madison County and Anderson, and and uh, you are highly esteemed. Yeah, that's very kind of you. Thank you. And Lou, tell us how if anyone wants to. Um, to be a part 
of the historical society? How might they go about doing that? Okay, all they have to do is come in. Uh, we have a volunteer coordinator. Um, if you're interested in volunteering in some aspect, um, you can fill out an application and on that application, it has a list of things that you might be interested in. Um, and if it's not, if there's nothing listed, you can write down whatever it is you're interested in. And then we'll see where we can fit you in. Um, another way too is to become a member. Um, and um, the membership is $20 for an individual, $30 for a family. Uh, and then it goes up higher if you want to do other. Sure. Um, and uh, membership is from uh, January 1st to December 31st. So we are um, asking our members to renew, you know, in that process, and that's in the Gazette too. Sure. Um, but just come in and ask. Um, and if you have friends that's interested in something, bring them along. Uh, we'll find something for you to do. Very good. I might add, Darla, too, um, uh, we are a 5013C organization, mm, yes. so any donation that's made to us is tax deductible. And one of the areas in this building uh, is on our second floor. We have a large room up there that we've started the process of turning that in to a county museum. Uh, our artifacts that we have are stored in the basement, uh, safely stored in humidified uh, sure. uh, weather uh, controlled climate uh, conditions uh, to protect them. But our desire is to someday have a first class museum on the second floor of this building. And uh, we have to raise the funds to do that uh, along with maintaining this building. And um, we've had, to, for instance, we've had to uh, put uh, a roof on this building's actually two buildings combined together. We've had to re-roof both of those buildings at a total cost of $25,000. That comes out of our budget. Uh, right. We have no way to rate, we get no assistance from anyone. We have to do it all on our own. And, but I, I bring all that up because if, if there are uh, viewers of this program that would like to help us in that uh, uh, effort to create a county museum, uh, please consider making a donation to the Madison County Historical Society. And again, it is a tax deductible donation. So one of the things we wanted to do as we wrapped up talking about the, your prestigious award and the um, center itself was just kind of go on a little tour and just scratch the surface of okay. what's available to folks at no charge should they want to come in and explore the building. Right. So we'll go do that now and uh, thank you both so much for your time this morning and appreciate all that you do for the county and for Anderson. Well, thank you for giving us this chance to talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Yeah, great. Uh, this is our meeting room where we generally have our monthly programs, the um, Civil War Roundtable on the third Monday and our programming on the fourth Monday of the month. And so we just expanded because the exhibit area because we knew that with quilts it takes up a lot more space. Right. Well, and beautiful quilts they are. Yes. You have, um, this is a piece quilt behind you. Um, this, this one here and that blue one um, are known as appliques, uh, which means material on top of material. Um, Very good. Then we have some that are cross-stitched, but I think those are on the back rows there. Um, now, and these are all from Madison County residents? Uh, yes. Um, the quilt guilds um, mm -hmm. got together. Linda Jones, our uh, session and exhibit person, decided to do uh, quilts. She's a quilter and belongs to a couple guilds, so she got the guilds involved. Um, they had not had a show for a year or two. Oh. They, they used to have annual shows. So I think that they've got it in plans that in two years we'll have another quilt show. Very good. So, I mean, that's down the road. Very good. So they'll need to be busy in the next two yes. years. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, a lot of people uh, that are quilters, they go from show to show or whatever uh, around the state. And um, so they like to show off what they've done, which is good. Sure. It's really great. And uh, 
So this is the first time that we've done a quilt show. Well, that's beautiful. Well done. Okay, this is our genealogy room where most of our data is kept. The white notebooks that you see are family information that has been given to us. If we have queries, we add the information. Um, it has to be a connection with Madison County. If we get queries and we do find information but it is not a connection to Madison County, we put it in a file in our filing cabinets. And as people give us the information about their families and we, our filing uh, gets larger, then we make it into a notebook. In this room also, we have map information, uh, land records, early land records in the 1830s. Uh, we have church records. We have a uh, notebook on each township in the county and of all of the churches, pioneer churches that are gone, churches that are open now. We have those all in our church records. We also have, this is our war section, and as you can see, Vietnam, Korea, and World War II. We, all, we have started with Spanish-American Revolutionary War. We do have 13 Revolutionary War veterans buried here in Madison County. Uh, we have um, all the different areas for the veterans. And I have one person who works on this all the time and one person who works on the churches all the time. Wow, that's phenomenal. So how many hours a week do they probably put into Oh, this maybe space? four to ten, something mm -hmm. like that. And all volunteer. Again. Yes, all volunteer. Yes. Um, we also have city directories, but we do not have um, as many as the public library. City directories can be used to determine where somebody was living at any specific time because it gives the man's name, gives his wife's name in parentheses, gives the number of children, tells whether he's a clerk or a glass blower, gives the name of his company, and then tells whether he rents, has a home, or whether he boards and gives his address. So you can pinpoint where people were living at any certain time, um, and our first um, directory is 1876, and then I think drop, jumps up to 1890, uh, up to in the 1990s. So uh, a lot of people like to know the history of their house when they buy a house. Sure. They'll say who lived there or whatever, and we can go into um, the city directories because they have listings by person's last name, but they also have listings by the addresses. Very good. So it's, So you have extensive records. Here. Yes, we do. So this is the school room. Is this the area we're in now? Uh, yes. Uh, we have um, memorabilia from all of the local high schools in the county, uh, those that have been closed and those that are still open. And um, we go on into this other room, how many yearbooks do you think you have? <laughs> oh, um, we have a complete set of Anderson High School yearbooks in the Nicholson Library, and we have, I think we've got all of Madison Heights, and we're trying to fill in Highland, but we also have the other schools that we're filling in, and from time to time, we put a list in the newspaper asking if anybody's uh, willing to donate a particular year that we don't have. And Very as you good. can see, we've got lots of them over there, too. Yeah, that's right. This is the workroom where they do most of the work for the schools. Uh, and as you can see, we've got other kinds of memorabilia in here as well. Um, they have their filing cabinets and everything. And uh, we have one lady that works on sports. So she does all of the sports things out of um, Pendleton, Ellick, Elwood, and Anderson Papers. And that goes into the filing cabinets over here. Um, one lady up here works, does a lot of the research. And um, another one, she has been working on uh, some of the obituaries for the veterans. So we have a combination of things going at all times. All right, this is our black history room. It's t usually taken care of by Bonnie White, one of our tr um, trustees. Uh, many of the artifacts that's here on the shelves uh, was owned by Jack Nicholson 
from his travels when he would travel in the summertime. Um, she has added some things and um, has files, and she also has done exhibits. I'm not sure we're going to have one this next year or not, but um, she's supposed to be working on this in the next month or so because she wants to rearrange it. Yes. Get it and bring some other things up, you know, and that type of thing. Okay, so now we're in the architectural room. Uh, we call this the architectural room. We have the blueprints for buildings around central Indiana. Uh, example, here's uh, Wilson's Boys Club. Here's the Anderson High School edition in 1976. Uh, we have individual houses. There's the we, airport. Yep, there's the Anderson Airport. We have all kinds of business buildings. Um, we also have them in, some of them lying flat in those kinds of files. Uh, we do have an alphabetical listing and uh, anybody come in and ask about a particular building. And we have helped a few people because if they are going to do something, addition or something to a building, they have to know what it originally was. Sure. And that uh, we've helped some people um, do the beginning of the original building uh, so that they can add on or whatever. So these came from Cato when he took over the architect firm on the corner of 12th and Meridian. And um, we've got them all indexed now. Okay, these are pictures of the plants of Delco and Guide. I think these might both be Delco. We have what we call the Delco room and the Guide lamp room. And in those particular rooms, we have artifacts um, like in the guide, we have different headlamps. And uh, I'm not sure we also have some of the ammunition that they did during the World War II. In Delco, the same thing. We've got uh, all, all kinds of parts that had been manufactured here. And we do keep those under lock and key. Sure. And then, you know, we have had exhibits, but, and people continually bring us things. And uh, so we have just now started getting part of it organized so we know what we have because otherwise we just had stacked it in the rooms <laughs> and didn't know what all was there. All right. So it takes a lot of work to, to determine what you have and, and get it taken care of properly. Wonderful. And that's what those volunteers are so yes. needed, why they're so needed and yes. necessary. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes. In fact, we even had... Um, couple of AU students that have worked inventorying thing. Um, Evan, uh, this last summer, he did all of the x-rays that we had from Anderson High School going mm -hmm. back to 1890-something up to 1930s or 40s. And then uh, Hannah, she worked on inventorying the guide, uh, the Delco Remy things. And uh, <laughs> They would lay out some things and then she'd ask questions about what they were to give a general idea. But we don't have the proper descriptions of each one, but that will come later as we build it. Well, Lou, it's been another <laughs> great day at the Madison County History Center. And thank you so much again for the tour. It's oh, been a lot of fun. You're welcome. Um, we want as many people as we can to come in to see what is here because it is for the people of Madison County. And free of charge. And free of charge, yes. You, you can't beat that. No, you can't. <laughs> and congratulations on your amazing, distinguished award. Uh, we're very proud of you. Well, we are very proud of ourselves, too, because we do work hard and put in a lot of hours, and we're glad somebody was able to say thank you for doing that. Well, and we do. Okay. We say thank you. Thank you.